Venusaur is back with the Indigo Disc DLC and is rocking a brand new model. It really looks like it's been up to some mischief and that's because it's been waiting to unleash its true power. With its base 100 special attack and base 80 speed, it's one of the scariest sun sweepers for good reason. Its ability Chlorophyll doubles its speed under sun while also allowing it to fire off super powerful solar beams in a single turn. But also, the sun allows it to take advantage of growth. When Venusaur sets up a growth when the sun is up, it actually gives it a plus 2 boost to its attack stats rather than the usual plus 1. With its doubled special attack and speed, Venusaur is now able to go crazy with extremely hard hitting solar beams, but also coverage with fire type weather ball, stab sludge bomb, and even earth power. Ladies and gentlemen, we are out here eating good with all the returning Pokemon, Venusaur being one of my favorite starters. We finally get to test this homie out. If you're into that kind of thing, consider hitting that subscribe button. I'm on my way to 300k, I plan on testing out all of the returning Pokemon, and I promise you won't regret hitting that button. Anyway, let's go ahead and jump into the battle. Alright, so look, we are battling indoors. However, you better have brought your sunscreen because it is about to get bright up in here. But first, I decided to lead off with the Swamp Hurt, ready to lay down some Swamp Hurt, as they actually end up leading with the Palafin. Now, this thing of course is probably going to go for something like a flip turn, try to get itself into its crazy ass Superman form. And I just figure, I'm just going to chill in here, lay down some Stealth Rock, and have a nice little time. So, they do in fact go for the flip turn. We see actually a pretty solid chunk of damage there. And I'm inferring that that basically means that thing is going to be Choice Bandit. That is a lot of damage for a base form Dolphin to be doing to a max HP Swamp Hurt. So I figure, okay, Choice Banded Dolphin, probably going to be noted. Now, they take that opportunity to pivot into the Incineroar. This thing is back, unfortunately, and he's looking at me extremely menacingly. And uh, it doesn't really have a whole lot that it can actually do to the Swampert here. So I'm thinking maybe something like a Grass Terra is about to come at me here. Regardless, I'm going to actually just go for a flip turn here. I've been intimidated, and I need to basically get a pivot. However, they actually decide to pivot themselves, and they're going to go for that parting shot. So... Swampert being intimidated already now cannot Earthquake his way out of a wet paper bag, so I am going to get the pivot here as they of course pivot. First they're going to bring back in the Dolphin, he is looking all crazy with his gloves, and honestly an extremely scary Pokemon, especially with Choice Band. This little buddy can be a monster. So I do get the flip turn off, which is great. Swampert getting the ability to have a nice little stab, uh, essentially water U-turn, is a super nice little upgrade. And this now allows me to switch into whatever I want. So I figure if there's one way to bypass the sheer, the sheer power of the Choice Banded Dolphin, it's probably to set up some sun. So I'm going to go into the Firefox. We set up that sun, holding the Heat Rock's going to stick around for eight turns. At this point, I'm just essentially free to go for a Solar Beam. The bad news is, this thing is extremely broken. Palafin gotta be one of the craziest mods because it goes for the wave crash here and even in the sun, that's just gonna just straight up take out uh, the Ninetales. So, fun fact for you, that's actually like a 70% chance for that to kill there, but that actually grabbing the kill kind of works out in my favor because now our homeboy Brute Root gets to soak up all the sun that we might possibly need. So, we basically, we set up the sun, we die, but then essentially now Venusaur is in a fantastic spot. So. This now opens up the door for me to go for a growth. I know that they're not going to stay in here and go for a wave crash. I, I know I can take that, especially in the sun. So I can set up that growth, basically just soak up all the rays out here. And they decide to go into the Incineroar. It does get the Intimidate off, but that obviously doesn't matter. But what does matter is the warts on Venusaur's ass are about to go crazy. We are now extremely fast under sun. Literally frog legs like his have never gone this fast. And with the growth up, with the doubled special attack, we're looking pretty nice. However... Incineroar often is going to be running more of a defensive set, and I figure even at plus two, it probably is able to live a sludge bomb. So, in order to combat that, I'm actually just going to go for the Terra Water. That's going to essentially allow me to live a Flare Blitz if that's what it wants to go for. Um, and Venusaur is now got a fountain coming out of his flower. We've lived to see the craziest age. I go for that sludge bomb. It does, in fact, end up living, and they instead go for the Taunt. That's going to block me from going for any more growths, but honestly, we grown up out here, baby. We are literally totally fine right, with this special attack that we're at. However, you will notice I do, in fact, have Black Sludge on this Venusaur. And now that I'm no longer Poison type, it instead just hurts me, which is kind of hilarious. That's absolutely an oversight. You've been messing around with the item on this thing. I threw Black Sludge on it last second before this match. Uh, and now it's, it's coming back to bite me. But I'm going to treat it as a flex because, listen, he goes into the Golden Go here. And obviously the Sludge Bomb is coming. It does resist that, but what most people aren't aware of is the fact that Venusaur has insane fire coverage in the sun with the Weather Ball. So I take a nice little bite of that Black Sludge, I say, ugh, that shit gross. I'm not a poison type anymore, bro. But what we are is essentially the damn avatar of Venusaurs. I have the power of fire through Weather Ball. I have a fountain coming out of my plant. 
I'm grass type. This thing has just got all the types going on and cannot be defeated. Obviously, the weather ball is easily going to take care of my dude. We take a nice little bite out of that black sludge and say, mmm, delicious. <laughs> and do hurt myself. But now they're going to switch into whatever they like and back comes the Palafin. So this thing does likely have priority with a jet punch. Being water type, I know that I can take that. However, they just stay in. I go for that solar beam. Easily able to outspeed. And that is going to end up just obliterating the shit out of this dolphin. And <laughs> again, one of the biggest threats in the game taken care of. Venusaur does not care. We don't care how bad this black sludge tastes. We are going on a rampage before it takes care of us. It's honestly, it's kind of a hilarious challenge if you think about it. I'm going to pretend like I did this on purpose because Venusaur needs to be nerfed so bad that I'll give you chip damage <laughs> at the end of every turn. Uh, but now they get a free switch again. They're thinking, damn, what am I going to do about this frog? So in comes... Hot Lucha, and Buddy's ready to wrestle, however, this frog is still super fast, the sun is still up, and Weather Ball is my highest damage output at this point, especially with the sun, so I'm gonna go ahead and throw some balls at homie, and that is just gonna take care of it. Hot Lucha does not have the bulk, and the Stealth Rock is also coming in extremely clutch for potential, uh, you know, focus ashes, but the fun is over. The, the sun is over, and the fun is over. Uh, away goes the sunny day, which is honestly fine to take another little bite out of the Black, black Sludge, but... We've been able to do such an extreme amount of damage to the team that Venusaur is honestly looking pretty solid here. And the funniest part is, they have three Pokemon left. However, I'm actually faster than all three of them naturally. In comes the Incineroar. I just outspeed and kill it with a Sludge Bomb. I'm thinking, I don't even need my sun, bro. These frog legs don't run like they used to without the, without the sun. But we can still outrun the second wrestler of the team, which is the Incineroar. I take another bite of the Black Sludge, and again, they now go into Clefable, who, of course does want nothing to do with the Venusaur at all. I can just outspeed go for that Sludge Bomb. And literally, Growth Venusaur is actually insane. If you do not have an answer for the Soar, it's gonna take advantage of you. So, my own Black Sludge is actually gonna knock me down to red HP, which is, again, hilarious. I've put myself on a timer, and if I knocked myself out to this Black Sludge, I think that would actually be kind of like the funniest anime ending. But they end up going into the bear. Blood Moon, Ursaluna, again, one of the another big threat in the metagame right now. It does actually, in fact, have the priority with Vacuum Wave, so they're able to go for that, and at this point in health, that is gonna, is gonna take care of Venusaur. So, we don't die to our own Toxic Orb, but it did put us in range for Vacuum Wave to be killed, so we helped Homie out a little bit there, but the good news is, I've still got a lot of threats in the back, and at this point, I'm just going to decide to go into the Embor. I'm Choice Scarf, I have the Stab Close Combat, and uh, we're out here just showing love to some starters today. I'm, I'm very glad that uh, Chris P. Bacon is back as well. I can just go for that Close Combat, it is going to take care of the bear. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be the match. I thought that was just a hilarious Venusaur situation, and actually showed what that boy is made of. So... While water type Black Sludge Venusaur might just be the new meta that I've created, I do in fact have a match where I do have the correct item on Venusaur, and let's get into the second match. So this time I'm running Life Orb Venusaur as if dude needs any more damage, but my opponent has a super interesting team, and let's go ahead and jump into it. Alright, so look, everybody and their mother is able to predict Swampert lead, as I do of course just lead off a of Swampert. Again, he's, he's ready to lay down some Swampert, he doesn't have the anchor arms from his long and forgotten mega form, but I love him nonetheless. So, I obviously want nothing to do with this asshole puffball that is gonna be the Whimsicott, so I decided to switch. I figure it's nighttime, but I'm gonna get the sunny day going immediately, bro. I'm gonna go into Mozilla, who can essentially take any attack that this thing wants to throw at me and then kind of threaten stuff out with the Fire Blast. There's actually not a lot that wants to deal with switch-ins to, you know, the, the Ninetales here. So, they actually end up going for the Taunt, which is totally fine. I just plan on essentially going for a Fire Blast. Their main switch-in could be something like a Zoomeral, but then you just leave that ass open for a Solar Beam and you're gonna have a bad time. So, they decide to go for the Leech Seed instead, which is totally fine. I do connect on my Fire Blast here and absolutely just burn that boy to a crisp. Take care of the Whimsicott, which is great because anytime Prankster is relevant, it's just always going to be annoying. So, they get enough free switch into the Infernape, and I honestly, I don't have a lot that wants to deal with the Ape here, as I do want to conserve the Drought abilities with the Ninetales, so I want to switch this thing out, and I decide to go right back into Chris, and I tell you what, we are about to get extremely crispy and beat the hell up here, because a close combat from Infernape does definitely take care of us. So, we did look nice and cool being switched in here for a sack, but we are a sack nonetheless, and honestly, 
This team that I'm using does rely on pretty quick momentum and making the most of the sun turns. So honestly, a sack like that opens the door for Venusaur to, to come in. And even though we're dealing with Infernape here, obviously, I have the defensive Terra with water, but also it's important to note that that close combat on the Embor only kills if this thing is choice banned. So I do know that this thing is most likely locked into that close combat, which is even better for the Venusaur over here. Our fat ass is essentially free to go for that growth if we weren't big enough. And now they decide to switch into Mian Shao. Oh, Floppy Arms comes in, as I am going to go for that defensive Water Terror anyway. I didn't run damage calcs during the match, but I just figure close combat it probably had to have been a choice ban set. But we go for you know, the Terra Water regardless. Venusaur being water at this point is totally fine against this matchup anyway. So I then go for the growth that gives us the nice little sharp plus two special attack boost. And we are out here in full form, baby. I can essentially just go for the Solar Beam here. And they actually just end up going for the fake out, which is honestly, just, it's fine. It's a little bit of chip damage, but there's not a whole lot you can do. When Brute Root gets a run in, I swear, to, you better get out of the damn way or you're going to get blasted. So I do go for the Solar Beam here. And it is a bad day to be a Mian Shao if you're on the other end of this thing. I, I go for that Solar Beam. Even Granny in the back is like, damn, bro, watch where you're shooting that thing. Almost, almost hit me in his little random child back here. But we do take care of it. Luckily, we didn't miss and just obliterate the spectators here. And we do take some of that chip from the life orb, and instead, it's not the black sludge this time. So, this now allows them a free switch. They decide to go into Frozmoth. Buddy has not seen the true power of the coverage that Venusaur has. I can go for the weather ball. And this moth is absolutely just burnt and roasted and toasted to a damn crisp. And that's going to take care of that thing. It probably, honestly, not a lot of people <laughs> truly respect Venusaur's ability uh, with that weather ball. So... Now this allows them to go into the ape. Again, I'm thinking this thing is probably choice banded here. I'm just going to go for the sludge bomb. It does go for the mock punch. It has the priority, but Venusaur is thick as hell. We are thick as store-bought gravy, and we are out here living Iron Fist banded mock punches, um, and that is super solid. What it does do, though, however, is it puts me in range to where Life Orb kills me on my next attack, and also this sun is going to go away, which means fun's over for Venusaur, as now they decide to switch into the Lux Ray. So I'm thinking I can just go right into Sableye here. I can potentially set up a sunny day, but overall just come out here to be a prankster menace like we're supposed to be. So this Lux Ray actually ends up going for Quick Attack, and that tells me that this is basically one thing. It's going to be a Flame Orb, Guts, probably Terra Normal with the priority Quick Attack, which is... Honestly, a pretty fire set, and I have dabbled with it in the past. But uh, Sableye is free to essentially just go for the, the sunny day here. I figure I do still have the nine tails in the back. However, I can get that up for a guaranteed couple of turns here if I need, uh, and if they just basically knock me out with a wild charge here. So they actually end up going for agility, and I'm like, damn, this Luxray, low key actually kind of heat right now. I'm not even gonna lie. They end up going for the ice bang rather than uh, the stab electric move because they probably expected a switch into uh, something like the Swampert. But that actually activates my red card, and that is gonna, in fact, basically make him waste that agility, which is kind of amazing. Again, Sableye's just here to kind of be an asshole about it, but I then go for the knockoff, knowing that they're gonna draw themselves out and I can knock whatever item off their next Pokemon. It ends up being the Azumarill. I say, no more leftovers for you. Dinner time is over, bitch. I can then go for a Will-O-Wisp, and that means that a burnt Easter Bunny is way easier to deal with. This thing is still actually a pretty big threat, has the opportunity for uh, Belly Drum, which it does end up going for. Um, and it's going to maximize that attack, but with the burn plus the sun being up, it's not going to get good damage on water moves, and it won't have great priority with the Aqua Jet. However, it is still a pretty big threat over here. But I'm just going to let it go for that Aqua Jet. I actually end up living it, which is amazing because of that burn and sun. Uh, and all I can really do here is just go for another knockoff, which... Doesn't really make a difference, doesn't put it in range to die from that burn, but essentially all I need to happen here is for Sableye to go down. I have one turn of sun left, which I basically set up the sunny day for absolutely no reason. Just to, just because I'm a freaking menace, just giving everybody a sunburn, just because, just because you can't, you know, sometimes you gotta do it. So the harsh sunlight fades, Azumarill is still gonna stay alive through the burn, and now this allows me to go right back into Ninetales, who's gonna set the sun up essentially for good. I guarantee eight turns because I do have. Uh, the heat rock on this thing plus with this thing being burnt i know that i can take an attack from it and i can actually just finish it off with the solar beam here so that's exactly what we're gonna do nine tails does come in pretty clutch able to take the aqua jet just barely thank god uh, that i did get the burn off on that thing and we are able to channel the power of the damn sun and that's easily just gonna absolutely send this azumarill back to the shadow realm where it belongs so their final pokemon is going to be that luxray and while i am faster i'm actually unfortunately now in chip range to that quick attack 
uh, to where Nine Tails can't finish this thing off with a Fire Blast. So it comes in looking nice and menacing over here. He does finish me with that quick attack and down goes the Nine Tails. But I did exactly what I needed to do in setting back up the Sun. But then I realized, hold on, actually, I may not even need the Sun because we have the true MVP, which is going to be the Swamp Hurt. And finally, we're about to lay down some Swamp Hurt on, <laughs> on the Luxray. I know that uh, this thing likely doesn't have coverage here. It is going to be faster, able to hit me with the Ice Fang, which doesn't do much, and I can finish it off with the Earthquake. So that is going to be the end of the match. Honestly, a super fun time whenever messing around with these, you know, kind of weather teams. And uh, it's situational, but super good time. Thank you guys very much for watching. I do really appreciate the support. And make sure to leave a like on the video, or else you will be solar beamed in your sleep tonight by Venusaur holding Black Sludge, just for the lulz. See ya.